from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Sapphire Now. Headline sponsored by SAP HANA Cloud, the leader in platform as a service, with support from Console Inc., the cloud internet company. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Welcome back everyone, we are here live at Sapphire Now, this is SiliconANGLE Media's flagship program, theCUBE, where we go out to the events, extract the signal from noise. I want to thank our sponsors, SAP, HANA Cloud Platform, and Console Inc. called Console Cloud, growing startup in Silicon Valley, connecting the clouds. I'm John Furrier, Peter Burst. Our next guest is Jason Wolf, the GM of Global Technology Partners at SAP, and Jim Gontier, who is the Vice President General Manager of Engineered Solutions and Systems at Dell Technologies. Or can I say that yet? Yeah, you can, I can say Michael Dell. announced it. Michael kind of announced <laughs> it's not officially Dell Technologies, it's still Dell Computer. <laughs> Guys, welcome to theCUBE, welcome for the first Thank time. You. Thank you, John. Um, so obviously Dell and SAP, long-standing partnership. Jim, we've talked many times about multi-vendor back in the day now, multi-services with the cloud. Yep. Jason, SAP has always been partnering from day one, we've known them. Um, what's changed now? Because you're seeing all the big names up here. We just interviewed IBM earlier. Um, these aren't Barney deals. This SAP really getting down and dirty with the partners and it's co-development but the cloud puts pressure on the partnering strategy because if you've got to produce fast, and so that kind of puts pressure, but also balances, make sure you do the right partnerships. Talk about what it means to partner in this modern era. Yeah, John, it's definitely changing. I think the cloud is one trend that's putting pressure on these partnerships to be more real, but it's also, I'll call it the millennial effect. You've got customers now that are expecting end solutions. They're not, anymore about I'm going to buy the software from you, the boxes from you, the service from you. They're saying, give me a solution. The cloud is a deployment model that kind of forces that, but it might be on-premise, hybrid, and cloud. So I think the forcing function is more the change to, uh, to us as uh, nature. We, we are more inclined to want quicker solutions. It's, more, it's not about technology or the cloud in my view. You know, Jason, that's a great point, because in many respects, while the cloud appears simpler, the amount of work required to organize, package, get it right, the software to run in the cloud, can be extremely complex. And in many respects, the cloud is the, is the ultimate statement of whether or not you've done a good job of thinking about how the software should look. Go back to that notion of millennials. If you've got a cloud solution, you can do on-premise. If you go on premise, it doesn't mean you can do a cloud solution. Absolutely, it, it, the, it brings a higher level of, of responsibility on the vendors to seem as one. We cannot no longer look like multiple solutions. I used this example uh, earlier today because it, you know, when Bill and Satya were on stage, it, it became clear. When we grew up, we got Lego blocks, right? We, we were happy, we got Lego blocks and we built stuff. Now, if you give my kid, my nine-year-old Lego blocks, he won't know what to do it. He needs the kit. He needs the instructions, he needs the little add-ons. He's he actually moving on the Minecraft. My, yeah, that's, <laughs> now it's moving to this thing. And I, exactly. say, I still buy Legos. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's the same thing happening in this world. We have to work on R&D, like you said, co-development level. We have to engineer the thing ahead of time. We can't go in and sell and then ask, Dell to go in and sell boxes that are fit into the solution. We have to do this end to end to your point. And that's what I think forces it. If you do it on the cloud, they all they see is the veneer of the end result, outcomes based. So how do you talk to a customer about the value of a partnership? Because it used to be, you buy hardware from me, you buy software from me, yeah, we'll work together to get it, to make sure it works. Now it's our partnership is better than their partnership. Is that a conversation that you're having with customers today? I, I, so I'll answer ahead, that and then ahead, Jason Jim, yeah. can jump in. So absolutely categorically yes, and we're having that conversation for a couple of reasons. One is folks aren't really interested in buying individual components, assembling, testing, validating, iterating, and then documenting. What they're really looking for is time to business value, time to business results. So in a great partnership like we've done with SAP, what we're able to do is take a lot of that, reduce the risk, reduce the cost, 
reduce the amount of iterative engineering and really let them and get time. to, absolutely time, and get to the point of how can they now look at all of that data and drive not only actionable intelligence, but more importantly, business results. This is one thing that came up in our last interview with the CTO of Capgemini. Oh yeah. Peter made a comment mm -hmm. about uh, moving the thought process up to the up to the top of the stack because the hardware, and don't take this personally, but is commoditized. And certainly you guys know that since why you have a, the engineered solutions you guys coming out with. So that, and then I just kind of teed up the next question. If the customer's moving their minds to the top of the stack mm -hmm. for the business outcome, the va time to value, that's where all the app energy is going to. Certainly cloud will power that. The commodity and the infrastructure hardware now has to be designed in a way that's purpose built. And you, you go back six, seven years ago, it was a dirty word. Oh, whoa, purpose built. Now, with hyperconverge, some of the things we heard at EMC World last week, and some of the things going on in the industry, certainly with SAP, having turnkey hardware but, is but, a trend. But it absolutely is a trend. But here are two things that you'll hear from Dell and SAP that you won't hear from anybody else. The reason why purpose built before was a dirty word is because you had to buy almost 100% of somebody else's stack. So one of the things that separates Dell and also the reason why we love working with SAP is the fact that we're heterogeneous. I'd love for everybody to buy 100% Dell server storage, networking, client software and services, but the net is, is that that's not always the case. So being able to do that in a flexible, modular fashion, back to your Lego block analogy, being able to do that in a heterogeneous way, and then more importantly, as of November last year, there's only one company on the planet who, in partnership with someone like an SAP, can truly deliver end-to-end. -end. And when I mean end-to-end, -end, yeah. client, data center, cloud, services, and life cycle support. So talk about that, because this spec kind of comes back down to partnering, but also Dell's differentiation. You have to move up the stack. Absolutely. And, and that's where the margin is, that's where the software is. What's the plan there? What do you, how do you view that and how does that impact the relationship so let's with talk SAP? About, let's talk about some yeah. real world announcements that we jointly we have made. done today. Yeah. So case in point, one of the things that we talk about is our engineered solution for SAP HANA Edge. You've heard us talk about and you had Michael talk about the democratization of IT. For the longest time, data analytics has been like the realm of enterprise and higher end enterprise. So working in partnership with SAP, we've been able to come up with an engineered solution that now allows data analytics to be done for small and medium business. The second thing that we announced, and you can tell by all the great buzz behind us, is IoT. This is where we can marry a whole bunch of things. I mean, case in point, if you believe our friend, Mr. Eastwood from IDC, by 2020, there will be 25 billion devices attached to the internet. How do you get all that data in? How do you analyze that data? How do you drive a business result? Yeah, I think he's understated on that forecast too. Ah, okay. Well, uh, we'll go back absolutely and- Absolutely understated. I mean, the <laughs> IOT is the future, no doubt about it. But it's still a little bit away on the app side, but architecturally, people are in IT making those decisions today. Correct. Um, Peter and I were just talking about that before you guys came on, that that's kind of a cloud decision. And also, leveraging existing resources decision. Yeah, but no. the beauty is, and, and I think Jim, Jim alluded to this, is they are engineered solutions like you're saying, but they pre-built. So this system that he's talking about, the HANA Edge system, yeah. it comes in at a price point, you know, for, for all of us to buy $100,000 with everything, with two weeks of consulting, with the SAP software that's near 100,000, starting MSRP. Yeah. But the beauty is, it's ready for scale. Right, you Correct. can take it and you can add to this, and for us it's great because our software will scale with it. Their machines will scale with it. They can decide, okay, I want to move that to the cloud. They've got a specific software pa patch that not, not a lot of people own today, yeah. that they can actually move things mm -hmm. into the cloud from Which your own Which means the services can scale exactly. with it. Exactly. So Absolutely. you get the software, the infrastructure, and the services all scaling with the business. Exactly. In, a modular, in a modular, Easy to build, easy to add on, easy to deploy. And even fashion. though it started on purpose built, which is which is what couldn't be done in the past. Okay, so talk about the partnership again. I want to get back to this because global partnerships, and certainly on technology partners, you got to pick the winners. Always want to pick winners. Jim, you are, you always talk about this as well. Industry standard, open has been a choice that both of you guys have a lot of experience in. Yep. How do you take that forward as you guys execute your your partnership and and individually in your companies? You got a lot of partnership opportunities out there. How do you separate them out? How do you decide? How do you tier them? How do you structure them? How do you guys manage that 
process. Okay, so I'll give you a perfect example of how we do it. Um, bottom line is, yes, we want to be open, but within every open uh, ecosystem, there are leaders. No if, ands, or but. SAP is a leader not only in the database, ERP, and the analytics space. So when you take the power of their innovation, and more importantly, the power of what Dell can do, there's a reason why we have, without citing, double-digit number of engineers who actually sit at the partner portal or the partner port in Waldorf who are co-engineering and co-collaborating. So yes, we have to work with a lot of folks and that will always be in our DNA. It's been there since you know, Michael founded the company SAP's 32 years ago. SAP's got a lot of geeks and Michael's a geek himself. I mean, it's kind of interesting partnership. Yeah. Correct. And yeah. so the net is, is the way we pick them is we look for other leaders, but more importantly. So technology leadership one. Well, technology leadership, more importantly, a killer differentiated value prop, because at the yes. end of the day, customers want to go drive a business result. They drive that business result through a workload or through an application. So how do we co-innovate in a way that gets you the best possible TCO, the best possible ROI, okay. and then we've all kind of talked about it. From a life cycle perspective, how do you get the best possible quality in a modular, I'll go back to your Lego block again, appliance-like, start small, build fast, future ready fashion. So I got to answer the and question. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and SAP for us, it's not about either or. We have to enable the choice. So today you saw the announcement with Microsoft and supporting yep. the public cloud in Azure. We have a similar relationship with AWS. The beauty is, and, and I think this is where Dell comes, every one of them has a very unique approach. So if the, the, we spoke about democratization, Dell is very unique in its ability to take these solutions that are relatively <laughs> expensive yep. and make them available for everybody. The downsizing of the services business. Uh, yeah, I, I well, won't put it in that fashion. I mean, one of <laughs> yeah. our taglines has been, we see technology as a way to enable human potential. We want to bring that potential to everybody and we do it through our democracy. Well, you could say downsizing mm -hmm. on one level, but also enabling a new class of services. New class so, of customers, yeah. new class of market, new class of opportunity for both of our firms. Okay, so now back to the customer impact to this whole partnering discussion. The old days in the CIO was, I got a single throat to choke, a single pane of glass, whatever the, <laughs> the phrase was. We've heard that. We all have. That's not necessarily going to be like that anymore. Just like perimeter-based security's gone, some are saying that that notion of single throat to choke is now going to be abstracted away into analytics. So, a kind of a fuzzy future in IT. How does the, your customer deal with this new change? Because obviously the partnerings are happening, a lot of co-development, we heard from Apple, IBM, Dell, SAP is an integration point. Now the CIO has become the single throat to choke because <laughs> it's the business line that's making the decision more and more. <laughs> Stuff rolls so, downhill. <laughs> yeah. But what go. goes to the vendors? <laughs> How does the CIO deal with this? Is it good, bad? I mean, what's the, I'm, well, I'm, I'm I, asking, I, I don't you know. know. I think it's brilliant because it goes back to the fact that they're demanding better and better solutions, which means not necessarily single throat to choke, it means metrics, outcomes. It means we're looking at what is the result of things and the cost to switch has actually gone down, yeah. which is why the single throw to choke is less important, it's still important, but less important than it was in the past, because if you went wrong 10 years ago, the company could have gone down the drain. But that, well, was, a, that was a cost-centric model, that was cost consolidation, but now with top-line revenue in IT, that's, that, they want to enable more cash, so he's the hero in the, in the, in well, the, in the mind of the, of the business guy. Correct. Yeah. So it's not so much pressure, you know, get it done, keep the lights well, on. Well, no, no, but, but to your point, there has been a fundamental shift. A CIO and his or, or her organization has gone from a cost allocation to actually being a partner to the line of business owner. Yeah. And so the net is, is yes, we're not only making them a hero, but what we're also doing is we're making their lives simpler. Back to uh, Jason's point, the net is, is that if we can give them the, something that's easy, something that's scalable, something where if anything does go wrong, the person who sold it to them will take care of everything because it has been co-engineered. It's not like I bought the hardware, I put the software on, and if something happens, I get one of these. No, 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 we've actually done this together. So our services folks are just as trained, our consultants are just as trained, and frankly, a lot of the SIs who we also partner with understand what to go do. And well, the commercial agreements and legal agreements are just as important as the so. co-innovation and development. But they're simpler, because it, you, the way we say it is, it used to be that we had known process, unknown technology. And now we're moving into an area where we have 
unknown process because we're dealing with engagement customers yes. and the technology is much more known. Much and in Great known point. process, unknown technology, the seller had I see a new all the advantage coming. and understanding, yeah. and yeah. so the buyer Guardians. had to protect Sounds like some new research coming out that you guys gonna buy. <laughs> and so yeah. we're constantly <laughs> looking for that single throat to choke yeah. because the contracting process is so hard. Yes, now, because it's all about co-creation, the buyer's more in charge, Correct. they can move forward because the vendor's trying to keep up, and that's why the partnership becomes so important. So exactly. I want to turn this into a question. Are you guys, so we've heard a lot today mm -hmm. about SAP's partner network. This is a broad partner network channels, go to market, et cetera. You represent, Jason, some of the biggest companies. Yes. Are you now starting, are the two of you not only starting to merge your IP in appropriate ways, but also starting to think about how you can bring your partner mm -hmm. networks together? Actually, we already are. Yeah. Um, before I came to join y'all, I was actually with an SI partner who was very complimentary of not just what SAP was doing, but more importantly, what they were seeing in the field together. Back to your yeah. um, very salient point, the ability to have a group of folks that can come in and say, I understand your business, I understand your pain points, we have this unique offering between our two teams, and then go get that executed. Yeah, this particular systems integrator was thrilled and wanted to figure out how to do a so lot more. So seamless I'll, in market Yeah, I'll dynamic. give you a very good example, which I hope we will follow on, because it's important for the health of all of us. SAP Foundation for Health is a new business network offering. We have a partnership with Apple. Dell and 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 you know Jim said this yesterday. <laughs> if I who, can, who you had a partner? What? And, <laughs> and Jim said this yesterday. If we come together with a foundation for we all know a messed up, discreet mom and pop shop type information systems in a trillion dollar industry like healthcare with a provider like Dell that can access all these things with their channels and the usability and devices which you guys are obviously using from Apple, suddenly you can transform an industry not only like Uber does or the, this is a much, much larger scale and the table stakes for all of society Execution, are much execution has to be very tight. Yeah. To, to execute in market like that, to come across very seamless. Yeah. Exactly. At that level, exactly. and requires very tight integration. To Jason's That's point. That's why we're so close. Right, exactly. <laughs> and to Jason's Give him point, a hug. It's, not just, it's not just us, it's also when we say the word us, Microsoft, the Foundation for Health, great partner has been Intel. So industry leaders yeah. coming together, looking at particular things such as health and life sciences, and how can we fundamentally t change that industry by putting our IP innovation differentiation together. And by the together. way, that trillion dollar industry, none of us are taking a significant part about, so there's no competitors. We can now, five, six partners, take a, a trillion dollars in. Look, let's be honest. Some of the save the world problems that we can all see on the horizon are not going to be solved by one company. We Absolutely. agree. It's going to take the best brains on Absolutely. the globe Absolutely. working together, and that's what we're talking well, about. And that's doing. a beautiful thing about <laughs> Mike and, and Bill specifically. They have in healthcare and other areas. Yeah. They have a very clear social agenda. Well, Michael and just donated to the Austin. He's uh, building a hospital. hospital. He and his yeah. wife and, and yeah. excuse me. He and Larry the Ellison won up to him building cancer foundation. research at USC. You see that one? <laughs> so I didn't. I'm going to focus on the what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Kill me with that problem. I'm going to help out that problem yeah. someday. Um, no, but this brings up a whole point. These use cases, these unknown processes or assets or apps, yeah. are being enabled by the new capabilities. I mean, IoT is a great example. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. bolting on cloud so that a Siemens could like just connect into the cloud, I know the customer of you guys. Yeah. And, and speaking um, of partnerships, you saw the announcement, both SAP's and ours. We are together and separately creating entire ecosystems of folks who can plug into these offerings. Which is how you bring There's your, why your partner yeah. networks have to start coming together in context, yes. the, in, in the context of specific classes of problems. Correct. All right, so and how we, are you guys going to feed the ecosystem? Because this is a big deal. If the, the, the ecosystem will be a battleground for the next 10 years, 20 years, because that's developer ecosystem and also channel, I'll just say channel for lack of a better word, or partner. Yeah, but increasingly the channel ecosystem has to become more of a developer ecosystem as well. It's, Absolutely. it's an evolving. That is a very it's good point. Absolutely. They have to move from just consulting to it, their own it, IP on absolutely. top of it. So Dell is releasing reference architectures. So that's not the full package, but for the people that take it, it's kind of like the Lego block instructions without the blocks, let people put those packages together. Are you guys funding that? I'm obviously you're partnering now, but like, do you have, are, are your partner, you have, I'm assuming you have a partner conference besides the one like here, like a 
separate we event. We had it yesterday. Was that that's, that that's your global yeah. event? Yeah, that's yeah. our global partner. Are you event. guys planning on doing a specific event around partners? Uh, you know, it's just between us, right? No yeah. one else is seen. <laughs> Live. I personally, I <laughs> people. No, no, no. Four hundred people. My, my personal. You pre-announced on the cube. Go ahead. My, exactly. <laughs> my personal, and it's not announcement. It's my personal mission, is to really up the ante as SAP as a partner because it's traditionally been a more of a closed user conference. group. And, and um, you know, there's certain things that I'd love to see more open and more large than we have. Even the 30,000, 300,000 online is just a tip of the iceberg of what the SAP ecosystem can draw by touching on 76% of every transaction in the world. But it's a money thing, but it's also an IP thing. Absolutely. I agree. That's, I mean, at the, at the, the test of a partnership historically has been how much money. But I think what CIOs and businesses are going to look for increasingly yeah, is I agree. the value, the IP that's unique to your partner. The well, results what, that you can drive as a function of that partner. The value that yeah. you're able to create. Correct. Absolutely. How has Dell's ecosystem changed? Because your vision of the solutions, we talked about this, is nice. Because you take away just, I, don't, I turn key's a word I use, I don't mean, it over, sure. oversimplifies it, but the idea is that you're not going to be configuring hardware all day long. Correct. You come in, it's built for workloads. Uh, and apps, and scales up, you get in memory, all this other stuff. How does that ecosystem grow? Because that's perfect for the cloud, that's perfect for IoT. Are you funding initiatives in the ecosystem? Yeah, so, so we're doing basically two high-level things and then we're doing a lot of other things with partners. The first thing you're going to start to hear is what we refer to as community-validated systems. So one of the great things that's happened in our engineered solutions, um, reference architectures, or blueprint world, is a lot of channel partners have, have uh, basically adopted it. So what we're finding is some of them have come up with some great solutions on their own, and now they're turning around and offering those to us. So this virtuous circle of making it better. So the first thing we're going to do is this community validated systems, and you'll be hearing a lot more about that um, over the next couple of months. The second thing we're doing is, yes, we are creating a partner ecosystem. You know this well, Dell OEM powers a lot of uh, the innovations, a lot of the differentiation you see from MRI machines to, let's just call it scale up, scale out architectures for others. So as we start to bring in more ISVs, more IHVs, we're not only going to feed that system, but we want to create something where the, the community itself generates their own solutions and then we can bring that back to the greater good. Jason, final question for you is, your KPIs this year, as you look at your business, because you got your, Keys to the hands on the on the keys to the kingdom. Well, the right? track's been amazing. What's your goal? <laughs> What's your goal I, I can't this year? continue this space. We had Hitachi, Apple, Dell, uh, yeah. Microsoft <laughs> in the last four weeks. That's Sapphire. launches for wimps. Come on, keep going. <laughs> yeah, no vacation for you. Don't media wiki yeah. next week. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea. We do hundreds of interviews a day. Come on. <laughs> joking aside, the the goal for me is going to be more depth, real like you guys started more depth, more real relationships, more real products that come out that next year we can sit here together and say how we transform this industry or the, these depth boxes. Of depth of the partnership or depth of the bench of people you work with? Depth of each partnership? I, think it, it, I think it goes in, in okay, hand in both. hand because as you said, there's alignment at the top, CO to CO, vision, culture and everything, all the way down to the technology stack because we're creating, again, these Lego sets that have to be perfect for the kids to as consume. That's adult Ikea. Exactly, as adult <laughs> Ikea, exactly. <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany, there you go. Yeah, it's Ikea. No, but I mean, this what's, is IT's what's changing. What's Tiffany? <laughs> oh, high-end jewelry. I, I don't know, know like a <laughs> Dell box. I, I assume you're married, but yeah. I, I, I love my wife I a nice necklace. I loved when I was a kid, now I love Ikea. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Build your yeah, own. I'm staring at that keg John, of beer over there. John, John, I got this line IoT, of sight. That's, that's an IoT enabled that, that's keg, an, yeah. keg yeah. When it runs empty, yes. yeah. it sends an update and yeah. Heineken brings another one. Changes, it's Sponsored change by the, supply chain. the Cube, soon to be a Cube sponsor. <laughs> um, guys, thanks so much for coming on the Cube. Really appreciate oh, it. I'll pleasure. give you the final word. Share with the folks, each of you, um, you could. What's this year's Sapphire about? If you could kind of encapsulate for the folks watching it, who couldn't make it? I'll what's going on? Up, you can start. Your thoughts on Sapphire this year? It's a continue, so in our particular case at Dell, the continuation of a great collaboration that's almost you know, more than a decade old, um, equally as important, showing how we can take a combination of engineered solutions, reference architectures, and help people dramatically lower time to result, lower costs, lower risk, and you know, frankly, go enable that human potential that we always know could be done. Perfect, so for me, on the partnership side, I'm not talking about the customer side, as everybody knows, this is the largest Sapphire ever. But I really like Bill's statement about empathy and being able to come back 
and you know maybe it's my nature but I'm much more uh, humble in terms of how I look at partnerships and how we look for these things so for me this sapphire is is a humbling experience because we've had the biggest and the best step up you know such as standing on stage for 10 15 minutes as an attest to that last week with 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 Tim and Bill it was an amazing event to be. So I think this is the culmination of those partnerships for us. Jason Wolf and Jim Gontier from Dell, Inside the Cube, Jason from SAP, Global Technology Partnerships, thanks for coming on, sharing your insights. You, John. I'm John Furrier, Peter Burris here live in Orlando for Sapphire, now the Cube. We'll be right back, you're watching the Cube. there'll be millions of people in the near future that are, want to be involved in their own personal well-being and in wellness. Nobody wants to age in a way that 